Dempsey and I have talked about kids, and she said, you know, she might want kids in the future. Now she really, really wants kids. Do the uncomfortable and extremely premature conversations ever end with these two? They're constantly discussing the world's weightiest topics for a new couple. Moving in together, love, and now babies. Guys, you've hardly known each other for a week. If you wanted kids badly and that was like you had to have kids, then I don't think it would work between us. Because I really don't. I really don't want kids. Jeez Louise, nothing quite says happy birthday like a potentially relationship ending statement like that. Delivered in the most casual of ways. Over breakfast. Can you pass me the honey please? Awkward. <laughs> so how did they get to this point? Well, when we last saw Dempsey and Statler, Statler was making a grand gesture of love. It's becoming a bit of a habit for her. This time, to celebrate Dempsey's birthday, she's flown them out to Scotland to stay in a castle. I mean, it's nice, but it is a lot. I'm overwhelmed and I can't believe that Statler has booked a full castle for me to stay in for my birthday. So when we join them in this episode, they're soaking in the views from Edinburgh. And yes, it is pronounced Edinburgh, not Edinburgh. I'm taking her to it. Edinburgh. 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 <laughs> and as they take in the beautiful scenery, the stunning views, Statler resorts to type and begins to talk about the bathroom facilities. She really does love talking about the bathroom. I can't quite remember any other 90 day cast member who's had so much scatological talk. This is how a proper royalty takes like a dump. Wow, I've never seen grass this green. Now, at this point, I think we've all realised that grand gestures are basically Statler's love language. And since they're here in Scotland to celebrate Dempsey's birthday, I'm a little worried about what's going to come next, as I think she is too. Today's Dempsey's birthday, so I'm hoping to make this the most memorable birthday ever. So what exactly has Statler planned? Hopefully not one of those wild sex parties that she went into great detail to share when she met with Dempsey's friends for the first time in the last episode. And given that topic of conversation, it's no real wonder that like her dad, her friends have also warned Dempsey that Statler is a little bit intense, a little codependent. But as we join them in the car, as they go sightseeing, Dempsey reveals that actually, regardless of all the warnings, she's really, really happy. I was having some doubts about Statler after she met my friends, but the time I've spent with Statler has been the happiest I've ever been in a relationship. In fact, things are going so well that Dempsey actually reveals she's warming to the idea of Statler moving in with her. Wow, that's a really big development. It was only a couple of days ago that that same thought scared the living daylights out of her. The idea of Statler moving in with me still scares me, but the more time we spend with each other, I am warming up to the idea. So there they are, both on cloud nine, driving along on their sightseeing tour, when out of the blue, Statler compliments Dempsey. You have beautiful eyes, she says, as do I. If we were to have eye babies, they'd be insane. And that is it. The topic of babies has just been brought up. Forget eye babies, says Dempsey. What about real babies? I think we'd be good parents. You do? I yeah. feel like I wouldn't be that great. I think you would. I don't know if I want kids. Now, Statler's mic drop moment, where she reveals she might not want a family, has clearly rattled Dempsey. She suddenly becomes very withdrawn and quiet. In fact, she's confused by what's just been said. You see, Statler being unsure about children is news to Dempsey. When they'd previously discussed the topic before they met in real life, Statler had a very different response. Statler and I had conversations when we first started speaking and she has told me that she is open to having kids so I'm just a little bit confused to hear her say something different now. So for the rest of the day, Statler's comment is like the elephant in the room. 
none of them want to address this huge, potentially relationship-breaking news. Instead, they power through the day, they take selfies, listen to bagpipes, and pretend like everything's fine. But there's clearly an undercurrent of unease. That makes me feel so special, but the whole topic of, you know, having kids is something that we need to discuss further because I do feel that we need to be on the same page about that. Now, when we join them over breakfast the next morning, in typical Statler and Dempsey fashion, the awkwardness and the tension becomes unbearable. Not only is the silence just plain uncomfortable, but Statler will be heading back to America soon. So they have to confront this issue. It's not something that they can just let slide. So Dempsey plucks up the courage to address it. Did you mean what you said yesterday? She asks. You don't want kids. I don't know if I want kids. It just seems like a lot of work. And a lot of money. Yeah, but it would be worth it. Now, for Dempsey, kids is a non-negotiable. So the thought of being in a relationship with someone who's dead set against it is a huge, insurmountable issue. But we learn that Statler's reasoning, her indecision and her fears around having kids actually stems from a very deep-rooted place. Let's not forget, she was adopted. She was given up by her biological mum just minutes after birth. She has such strong emotions, such a deep-rooted fear based on this whole experience. Which is why she asks Dempsey a very important question. Would you adopt? Yeah, I would consider adoption, yeah. I would have one of each. I don't know if I could adopt. You can clearly see just how much pain Statler's in as she's talking here. As she recounts her experience with being an adopted child, the impact it's had on her life, how it made her feel as a child and how she feels now, it becomes very obvious that this isn't a topic that she's likely to change her mind on. Dempsey tries to argue that having kids can be a beautiful thing. She points to her relationship with her dad and her dad's relationship with his parents as the perfect examples of this. But having come from a family in which she never truly felt loved or truly felt accepted, this, sadly, is a very difficult thing for Statler to understand and appreciate. She can only relate to what she's personally lived through, and that is an experience she doesn't think she can go through again. I think a lot of people go into adoption just thinking it's all hunky-dory and the kid's going to be grateful to you and things are going to be easy. Now, Statler also mentions a number of other reasons why she doesn't want kids. She's already mentioned money and the fact that it will be a lot of work. She throws in the fact that she doesn't think she's got a maternal instinct. And as Dempsey listens to all of this, her face just falls. But you get the sense that the real reason, the main reason at least, is what she herself identifies as adoptee trauma. She admits that this is something she really struggles with. I still have a lot of adoptee trauma that I have not worked through. It's honestly kind of triggering just to have this kind of conversation. Look, it's completely fair and totally understandable that Statler is struggling with this. But it does raise the question, if the main issue is trauma, could that be something she's able to work through given enough help and time? Or is this the end of the relationship? Because for Dempsey, not having kids is not an option. I will have a child at some point, whether I do it on my own or not. <clears throat> if you wanted kids badly and that was like you had to have kids, then I don't think it would work between us. It's really hard to watch Statler so coldly tell Dempsey that their future together may be over. She says it in such a matter-of-fact way, all the while while Dempsey's eyes are filling with tears. Dempsey's absolutely dumbfounded. She can't believe that Statler has changed her tune so drastically. If she'd been honest that that was her stance from the very beginning, then this is that big of a deal that I don't think Dempsey would even have entered into a relationship with Statler in the first place. So it must really hurt that now, face to face, after falling in love and having such a great time together, Statler seems to have totally ruled out the notion of having a family together. And she really seems to twist the knife when she delivers this definitive final answer. Because I really don't. I really don't want kids. Cool. Great talk.
I'm gonna go and get ready now. <laughs> Statler's lack of emotion could actually come across as a lack of empathy here, but I don't think that's the case. Like yes, while she smiles as Dempsey walks away, it seems to me that that smile is coming from a place of hurt. And you can see just how dejected she is when Dempsey leaves. She sits there all alone looking really glum and her confession makes it really, really clear that her issues of rejection and abandonment are coming back to haunt her. She feels rejected by Dempsey here. She feels like she's not enough. I was really hoping I'd be enough for her, but now I'm terrified that I'm not. It's really sad that she's come to that conclusion because it's not accurate. This isn't Dempsey rejecting her. In fact, far from it, they were getting on better than ever. Dempsey reacted the way she did because she'd been lied to up until now. She'd been told that Statler would consider having kids, but now definitively won't. Plus, of course, the brutal way in which the message was delivered. So it's not about rejection. It's about Dempsey feeling like she's been blindsided yet again. And that is a feeling that Dempsey's sick of. Why do you want Because that's just not the conversation that we've had before. Is that a make it a break for you? Yeah, to make it break it for her, isn't it, sir? So. This is the sort of conversation that it's very difficult to rewind and take back. A sorry won't fix this, which is why I can't see how they could possibly come back from this. To me, it feels like that was the last straw.